if somebody explained me lead code how to get started with lead code in such a language that even a layman can understand i would be doing lead code since i was like in first year or something and i would be crushing through lead code i would probably have like 500 to 1000 questions on lead code but you have that opportunity so don't miss out I hope you guys are doing great and so am I and it's been some time since I last recorded like one of these videos on my English channel even on my Hindi channel like for the past 2 months I guess I haven't recorded even a single video I know I've been missing out these videos constantly for the past few months like a lot has happened in my life I'll catch up on all of that in some other videos but for this video I just want to say before I get into the lead code question the title the reason why you clicked on this video I just want to say like there's a lot of stuff that has happened behind the scenes that you probably have no idea about like a lot of personal issues and things that were going on about me my life my career about my business a lot of things that I haven't even discussed with you you have no idea you're just like sitting on like the tip of the iceberg you have no idea what was going on in my life for the past couple of months I'll update you guys on that very shortly but other than that I would say there's a lot of exciting stuff coming in my life very soon I can't say much about it most of it is career related but you will see like a lot will change about my videos and stuff I'll talk about all of that in some other videos but let's just jump straight into the video you probably clicked on this video for a reason how to start with lead code or how to solve your first lead code question half of my Instagram DMs are filled with coding questions and most of those coding questions are about DSA so this video in particular is going to be about how to get started with lead code so for that let's jump straight on my screen right now this is my lead code profile i've been solving questions for the past couple of months i said like there was a bunch of stuff that was going in my life you can see there are vacant spaces in between and i've solved a couple of questions sometimes i go crazy like solve seven eight nine questions but more often than not i try my level best to solve at least like one or two questions on a daily basis once you get started with lead code it becomes very addictive and the basic idea is you never get tired when you're winning when you have the ability to solve these questions you just never get tired so let's say you're solving your first lead code question the very first thing about getting started with lead code is knowing the interface of lead code go to lead code dot com make your account a fresh account it should have zero questions nothing just a fresh account now when you hop over to lead code something like this should open up you can head over straight away to the problems you can also go to profile like i went over here you can check your profile and stuff so these are all your daily challenge questions when you get into lead code you can actually solve daily challenge questions and you get points and stuff it's like to gamify the process nothing special about it as such other than that you can go lead code interview crash course lead code interview crash course and start learning from over there like this is the stuff if you're let's say applying for a job and you have 3 months time left and you just want to go ham in on lead code then that's that but for a beginner who has no idea about lead code and has not solved even a single one of these competitive questions or just like basic interview style questions where you have to run test case and you have to solve a question with a certain time limit maybe a company gives you like 2 hours or so to solve 3 questions as such so that's that you can also follow a study plan you can go for top 150 interview questions i haven't personally jumped into that i have touched a little bit lead code 75 i've dipped my toes in this then sql 50 is good for in certain job interviews you have to also go through sql like for example i'm preparing for data science and data science they often ask sql sql and pandas this is what they ask let's just hop over to lead code 75 you can see their questions of every single topic the most basic topic in most companies that's asked is array and string or you guys would be aware about array like you're watching literally a lead code video in this Area section, you have a couple of questions, starting from the easiest ones. Then, as soon as you jump into that, the difficulty kind of like increases incrementally. You can solve a couple of these easy questions. I've solved all of the array questions. Then you have two pointer questions. These are basic topics. Then you have sliding window. Sliding window is a very important topic. You should always solve sliding window questions because you never know when this is going to like be helpful for you. You need that bird's eye view of sliding window in almost every single array question. That's like a medium problem. Somewhere deep down, you will feel like a sliding window can be used. Then you. Have prefix sum. This is also a very important topic. Then you have hash map. Hash map you can basically use it through like your dictionary in Python. Then you have stack. Stack is also a very important topic. I didn't go after that, but stack and queue. Also linked list. You can say stack. You know, LIFO, FIFO, stack, queue. You know that. After that, it's linked list. Up till this point, you should do every single one of these questions. There should not even be a single excuse of not doing these questions because doesn't matter whether you're going for a product-based company or a service-based company. They will 100%, 100% ask you all of these topics: array, stack, queue, linked list, and you know you have seen the above topics as well. After that, if you're going for a bigger company that probably has like two, three, four rounds, like Fang companies or companies that offer like huge salaries, then you also need advanced topics. I put the topics that I just discussed before it into like the easy category. after that this is into more advanced topics advanced topics in include bfs dfs that's your binary tree then you have graphs this is binary search tree bst you have dfs bfs then graphs 
graphs is super important then you have heap so this specific questions on lead code that can only be solved through heap and you will mostly find them in like hard and medium category they're not necessarily in the easy questions in easy questions you can also go through like dictionary and even list like arrays but heap is one of them then you have binary search binary search is very easy i mean yeah binary search is one of the topics that you learn then again backtracking is an advanced topic dp means dynamic programming dynamic programming one dimensional and multi dimensional this is a very important topic again and then you have bit manipulation bit manipulation is basically you should know how to convert octal to hexadecimal to binary and all that stuff mostly it deals with binary i have haven't touched this topic i have no idea about this topic and, and this is the best part about me making this video i am not a professional most of the videos that you watch on youtube are actually by software developers who have worked in the industry for 5 7 8 years and when they talk they talk like a professional they don't have the pov the point of view of an individual who is just getting started for me if you specifically follow me i'm an individual who is just getting started like you literally saw my profile it was 184 questions out of which at least half of them were easy questions so i am coming from a background where i'm solving most of the questions by myself and most of them are easy i haven't purchased any course till yet i'm not following any guide this is the way i'm doing it because i want to learn from the basics and i want to do it by building a community and that's what i plan to do with the video after that you have intervals monotonic stack all these topics all these are advanced topics until this point it's a linked list you should solve all the questions if you're following the lead code 75 or any 150 question 200 question you can follow the striver sheet it's very famous here in india you can follow that as well i'm just going through the basic interface right now if you don't want to follow like this road map and you want to go like me you want to discover lead code a little bit and actually get into the nitty gritty and learn these program style questions by default it checks off this box which is all topic and it's going to show you all the questions that are there from all the topics what i prefer doing is when you're a professional you can actually go and pick one that's the easiest way but what i would suggest you is you can actually forget about this go to the difficulty and pick easy question and start from just forget about this and tags you can actually start from array or string if let's say i hop over to array question and difficulty and see i have solved most of them so you can actually go and pick one of the questions and then you can get started and then this is your profile you can go and check your profile this is a streak for daily questions if you solve those like daily challenges it gives you a streak i have had like streak for like 10 12 days at max then there is some hard question that i am unable to solve and i don't personally like to cheat in this video even though i'll tell you a uh, trickier way of cheating by using chat gpt but not actually using chat gpt in a way that it kills your logical thinking let's just check my profile from where i started it says 184 questions and you can see you have these green dot you also kind of like get addicted to these having these green dots on your profile so it's like even if it's a bad day you can still solve one of the questions to maintain that streak let's just jump into one random question that i picked how did i pick it just go to problem list here and you can actually pick one of that let's go through the basic interface every single thing that i told you about i'm going to discuss most of it in some other videos because i think i have a lot of content that i can make on lead code because there's not a lot of content on youtube about lead code everybody has like their dsa course and they want to make money through it and it's totally fine i don't have anything against anybody but if you really want to learn and you want to learn through a proper way not a shortcut like you you just saw like lead code 75 that's a road map you can follow it will not help you to mentally grow and what i want from myself and probably i'll suggest you the same as well is to have that mindset that you look at a question and your brain starts thinking how can i solve it it looks around for different ways to solve the question and then you kind of like get close to the solution maybe you may, are not able to solve all the test cases but you're at least able to solve most of them i wanted to get to that point and this is something that i'm specifically trying as well so let's just pick this question i'll go through the basic interface this is a description of the question it tells you about the question gives you one or two examples one example here second example third example and the most important part the most important these constraints never miss these constraints a lot of people miss these constraints what these constraints tell you about is not just the value of nums or nums i but also sometimes about time complexity it won't specifically mention like do it in big of n square or n log n but the matter of fact is you will sometimes find that it has the number of iterations because back in the compiler the moment you run the code it has a certain time frame if you exceed that certain time frame it is going to throw a time limit exceeded error as you solve through these questions you will discover what i'm saying but that's that you can scroll all the way it gives you what topic it covers its basic array question then it also gives you a hint we won't look at the hint as of now we'll also look at the hint in what particular point but not right now then you have this place where you can write the code you can choose your language i personally prefer python 3 a lot of people are going to be like oh but python you know python this python you can use python a lot of people are against python and the reason why they're against python is because 
most people in the python community actually use inbuilt functions and if you are like me you started your career back in 2018 and started from c++ back in the day when i was in high school i know the basic concepts i know how pointers work i know how in the back end data is stored my conceptual knowledge is rock solid because i worked hard on it but if you are someone who just bought a course 5 7 8 hour course and you straight away learn python and know the programming language then you're going to be at huge loss but if you're like me you can do python otherwise for most people i recommend c++ or java mostly java because java is also used in companies so it's like killing two birds with one stone choose your language python and then you can start writing your code it shows the test cases test cases are basically the very example that it showed you in the description that's case 1 exact question 34512 34512 you can see over here as well then case 2 and case 3 you have to run these basic three test cases other than that there're going to be a lot of other test cases as well you can write your code over here there are also other options like you can submission notes and stuff you can retrieve your last submitted code blah blah, blah. It's, it's a bunch of stuff you can also set like reset the ui layout most of these features are over here you can also like for example control s and save the code but that's available in the premium version of it but it doesn't matter premium version for me is useless oh, the only reason you want to have the premium version is so you can see which all companies actually are you this question because a lot of these questions are asked by companies but who cares i'll also tell you a hack about how to unlock these premium questions like you know some other day as of now let's just jump into the question so what does this question say it says minimum right shifts to sort the array what is a right shift i think most of you would know about it but in case you don't know i'll just take out my ipad in a second and i'll explain you but before that let's read the full question it says you are given a zero index array nums of length n containing distinct positive integers a nums array is given it is of length n and all the positive integers are distinct that means no two positive integers are alike it says return the minimum number of right shifts required to sort nums and minus 1 if this is not possible A right shift is defined as shifting the element at index i to index i plus one percentage n or modulo n for all indices. The wonderful thing about the easy question is it has already given you a hint on how to solve this question. Minimum number of right shifts. So the idea behind right shifts is, for example, let's say you take an array, for example, like this one. It says three, four, five. One, two. So a uh, array is basically stored in blocks. If you have done any form of programming, you already know that. But this is how the array is stored in backend. So the right shift operation, basically, what it does is it's going to shift this element over here, this element over here, this element over here, this element over here, and the last element to the front. So in one iteration, this is how it's going to look like. Two is going to go over here. Three is going to shift to this side. Three, four is going to shift to this side. Four, five is going to shift to this side, and one is going to shift to two. So this is how it's going to look like in one iteration. Similarly, in the next iteration, it's going to two is going to go to three, three is going to go to four, four is going to go to five, five is going to go to one, and one all the way back. So in the next iteration, it's going to look like one, two, three, four, and five. So as you guys can see, it is sorted. That's what the question wants us to do. It wants us to find the minimum number of iterations, minimum number of right shifts, basically. I'm saying iteration is one right shift operation equals to one iteration required to sort the array. So this is how many iterations? This is one iteration and this is the second iteration. So in two iterations, two is your answer, ladies and gentlemen, to solve this question. So how are we going to solve it? See, the basic process of solving question is step one, visualization. This is visualization. This is what we have done. V I S. That's how I'm writing. This is the step one. I'm writing a part. Visualization. Once you visualize how you're going to solve the question, you can write a pseudo code for it. In the pseudo code, what we are going to do is let's say nums. So we are going to make a uh, list num sorted, and we are going to store the sorted value of nums. Why we're storing a sorted value of nums? Because we need something to compare it with. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run a loop. We're going to run a loop. Loop can be a for loop. or a while loop i sometimes pre prefer while loop even though writing a for loop is much faster but in while loop it gives you kind of like the full control on how you want the looping variables to operate then in loop the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to shift this and how we are going to shift this we are going to create a new array we are going to create uh, a new list let's say and in this new list at the ith location before that let's say i'm going to store the position let's say i'm going to write it as new position new pos new position is going to be from the i plus 1 uh, i plus 1 let's understand why i plus 1 i plus 1 basically because we are shifting everything one step on the right forget about the last element for a second one step to the right see 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 4 4 goes to 5 so we are shifting everything to one side so i plus 1 but for the last element if we shift it to 1 
the array over there is not defined so it's gonna show you like array index out of range something like that so for that we are writing modulo why modulo because what is the size of this array five length of this is five so if we modulo five if this is on the fifth location if we shift assuming that it's not from zero index i'm assuming it's from the first index if you shift it one step ahead what's essentially going to happen is it's going to go to sixth position but since it's modulo five it's going to return one so one is are this you can also take consider from zero zero one two three and fourth index if you shift from four to five then it's going to be five modulo five which is zeroth index which is also the beginning i just explained from one is one first index because it's easy to visualize but i know a lot of these nerdy programmers are going to go you, you don't even know how array works the new list First, you're going to store the position. So it's going to be percentage n. That's that. And what we're going to do is this new position. We're going to store the new position in that what? From our previous array. What was the name of previous array? Nums. So it was nums. Nums and it is new position. So this is how our new list would be formed. And after that, we have started adding all these elements to form like the newer list. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to compare whether our newer list in one iteration that we've actually formed, is it similar to the sorted array that we need? So if we, we're going to do that, we're going to make an if statement and we are going to compare it. And then if that's the case, we will return the count. And what is count? What is count? Count is the iteration number. We are going to also maintain a variable which is going to increase in every single iteration and then it's going to be through count. So we've got the basic idea of how it's going to be like and if in that entire looping structure, if in that entire looping structure nothing happens and it goes out of the loop, then we are going to return minus one. Essentially returning minus one, what it basically means is in an entire loop, nothing fucking happened. So the answer is minus one. So since we have that idea on how we are going to solve the question, let me open my good notes over again. The second part was what? The first part was visualization. This is very basic. If somebody explained me lead code, how to get started with lead code in such a language that even a layman can understand, I would be doing lead code since I was like in first year or something. And I would be crushing through lead code. I would probably have like 500 to a thousand questions on lead code, but you have that opportunity. So don't miss out. So after this, the third thing that we do is write the code. And in writing the code, I'm already gonna do it. We're gonna debug. In programming, there's never ever a day when you'll hit, even after solving almost 200 questions, and even this is gonna happen when I solve like 500 to 1000 questions, there's not gonna be a day when I hit compile or run in lead code essentially. And it's gonna run the code error free, passing all of the test cases. I think it happened only once in my career. It never happens. So we need to debug. Then debug, sometimes you can actually debug it. Otherwise use chat GBD. I would prefer debugging. Lead code doesn't have debugging feature. It requires again a premium feature. If you know how to debug, excellent. If you don't, you can debug in your mind. You can try run the code. Otherwise you can go through chat GPT and it's gonna run test cases. I'm also gonna show you how you can use chat GPT efficiently. I know we are cheating a little bit, but it's better than looking solutions. What a lot of people, what a lot of beginners essentially do is they go to solutions straight away and they look at all of these solutions. And this is not a healthy way because you can look at solutions, but I want your thinking to grow as a person essentially. And your thinking's not gonna grow. So I don't want that. So the next thing is, you're to write the code for it that's what we're going to do and at the fifth point we're going to submit the case when everything is all right it's all done this is basically a five-step process on how you're going to solve the question so let's jump on to the main part that is essentially solving the lead code question first of all we're going to take sorted array and sorted array is going to be nums.sort. A lot of developers often go crazy when I use inbuilt function of Python, but see, something like sort can be used. In case you're just kind of like getting started with this, I would suggest you to sort entire list by yourself. But once you go through lead code question solving day in, day out, day in, day out, you can essentially use some of the Python functions. Don't overuse them. I would not recommend, do not import any other library because it's gonna kill your thinking process. So don't do that. We are going to create a loop, I loop. What I'm also going to do is I'm also going to write the comments so it's easier for you to understand. And I would also encourage this is a pro tip. Doesn't matter how many lead code questions we have solved. If you write the comments and you're preparing for interview, you did a question like six months ago. You look at the comments one day before the interview and you can brush the entire concept in seconds. You don't need to watch any stupid fucking videos. Sometimes they get a little aggressive, but lead code. So I loop, I'll write the comments as well. Storing a sorted array for comparison. Then I'm going to store I loop. This is going to be the looping variable. And I'm going to have Y loop, I loop less than length of what? So how many 
iterations do we really need think about it we need exactly the amount of right shift operations as the length of our array the reason being let's say the length of array is 5 and you do five right shift operations what's going to happen it's going to come back to its original state that means the array cannot be sorted so the answer would be length of nums over here then the next thing we are going to do we are also going to go through j loop 0 while j loop less than what we are going to run this till again length of nums okay let not not length of nums let's do it by sorted array because length of nums we're going to mess around with nums a little bit so even though we are not going to change the size but like whatever sorted array then we are going to make a new variable as i discussed which is new position and new position is going to be j loop plus what plus 1 and i'm going to put this in brackets and it's going to be percentage and this is the main logic behind the code this is the beauty about lead code you can actually see all of these things either in hints we didn't go through hints i can actually go through hints and it's essentially going to tell us how we can solve the question which i told you without looking at hints anyway because i've been solving for some time if you are a mere beginner which i was like 4 5 months ago you can actually look at the hints it says find the pivot point around which the array is rotated second hint is will the answer exist if there is more than one point so you can kind of like look through the hints as well but i'm solving through my gut feeling or how i feel So it's all right. What I'm going to do is this new array is going to be new array jth location is going to be the old array's nums new position. Before doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set new array as 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 I'm going to set new array as zero for all of them, and I'm going to set multiply this with length of sorted array. so all the elements are set to zero so that's that after that what i'm going to do is once that's done i'll increase j loop by 1 and it should be done inside and also over here i'll increase i loop by 1 which is the looping variable so the loop goes further and you're not running into an infinite loop then the next thing is we would want in every single iteration nums array nums should be equal to new array why nums should be equal to new array because when i change nums to new array this should be nums for the next new array so that's that i'm going to write for next iteration then over here we're going to make a comparison if nums equal to equal to you can also kind of like slide these windows i forgot to tell you about it you can also change the windows on how you want it to be like it's totally your choice we want it to be like our sorted array so if it's like the sorted array then we're going to return count when we increase the i loop that means we are going through one iteration we can also over here increase the count by one since one successful iteration has been done all right okay count should be zero in the beginning count should be zero anything else we are missing on i don't think so then we are going to return count before running the code essentially you should kind of like have a bird's eye view at the entire code we had the sorted array to compare it with we initialized count with zero i loop was a looping variable j loop is also the looping variable it's going to be less than length sorted array because we only wanted to run as many times as we have the length of the sorted array so that it comes back to its original state the new array declared am completely empty it's all of the elements have been initiated with zero then j loop is going to start from j length of sorted array then it's going to oh the n this n thing this n should be okay i should make n rather i think making n is a bit better n should be length of sorted array and then over here we can change all of this with n all of, and also this is a pro tip hold your alt key or your option key on mac and click right over here this enable multi cursor for you so you can click backspace and all of this is essentially going to be removed and you can hit n and everywhere Length sorted array has been changed to n. So this loop is gonna run till n. J loop is equal to zero. New array is this n. N number. I think it should be n minus one. N minus one times. And then we are going to have while J loop less than n. A new position J loop plus one percentage n. That's modular and that's fine. The new array J loop is gonna have new nums new position. That's fine. J loop is going to go by one. That's all right. 
i think this should be at the bottom you can also press option and the lower key to do like this but you, you're gonna learn all of this as you go on so it's not a big deal nums array it's for next iteration and then we're going to compare nums to our sorted array if that's the case then we're going to return j loop is incremented by one then we're going to go outside count is equal to count plus one that is one successful iteration and then we're going to increase i loop by one and at the end of it return count no return return minus one if we don't have a successful one you're going to return minus one because return count is already returned over here i think it should be fine you can click on the return button or as a shortcut suggest command and the apostrophe button which is right beside your enter key you can press that let's see fingers crossed at the first iteration don't be disappointed because sometimes it's gonna be yeah exactly like see it says n is equal to length of sorted array what went wrong here it says object of type none type has no length none type has no length is there nums contain distinct integers nums count is n why is it throwing an error what if i write it as nums is still gonna be an issue i mean you have to go through these issues almost on a daily basis nums dot sort unsupported operand so how does it go i have to push it in brackets and run now like index out of range right where it says index out of range while j loop j loop plus one why is it index out of range new position new position is gonna be its new position okay if this is n then what i think it should run in that case okay we are having an error all right three four five one two this is minus one it is essentially returning that now what you can do is actually you can debug the code i usually go and debug the code waste like 20 something minutes but that's actually not wasting my time that's actually like investing my time into the learning process but for the sake of this video and also want to teach how you can use chat gpt i'm going to teach you how you can use chat gpt for this question this is a basic example of how you can give the prompt because see if i use chat gpt right in the beginning i wouldn't have learned anything but in this particular process that i'm following right over here what you saw is you picked a question visualized how it can be solved wrote a pseudo code for it went to the software on this online compiler, wrote the code for it from the very basics, according to the pseudo code that you kind of like visualized from, then you're going to debug and then you're going to submit. So we are going to debug by using chat GPT. So head over to chat GPT and then I'm going to copy all of this info, like this question up till here, go to control C, then I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to write my prompt. My prompt is going to be, I solved this question on paper. Tell chat GPT that you solved this question in paper and this question is correct. There is some syntax error, there's some logical error here and there just a little bit that you are maybe confused with. So tell chat GPT that. I solved this question in paper and it should be correct. But for some reason, I am not getting the desired results. Then copy paste your code, paste it and then tell. This is very important, the next step. Don't make changes to my pre-existing code wherever you see I have made a mistake just correct it and write a comment and then you're good to go just hit enter now it's going to solve this question essentially by itself let's review your existing code and identify the issue this one correct error okay fine overall structure the first one is incorrect sorting assignment you use sorted array is equal to nums dot sort however sort sort or why can't I speak? However, sort sorts the list in place and returns none. You could use sorted nums. Okay, instead. Okay, fine. Sorted nums. This is one of those Python inbuilt methods that I don't even use anyways. Array update logic. The logic to create a new shifted array is incorrect. You are updating nums with the inner loop, which will lead to incorrect comparison, shifting and counting operations. The count should be incremented only after an entire write shift, not during the creation of the new array. Okay, fine. Break condition. The break to see if the array sorted should be outside the inner loop. Now it's going to correct all of my mistakes. Sorted array is equal to sorted nums. We already discovered that. It was fine. Count is equal to zero is fine. N is equal to length of nums is fine. While count less than N. It has changed my the name of my stuff to count but i think it's all right count is fine because count we are incrementing count as we are incrementing i loop so i think count is totally fine that's again what chat gpt did right over here it eliminated the inefficiencies of my code why it eliminated in inefficiencies of my code because i was using i loop which was not even needed you can straight away do it with count then this new array multiplied by n was fine for i in range new array i plus one modulo n is equal to nums i it directly did that nothing wrong with that nums is equal to array update new items update uh, for next iteration count okay fine 
fine fine fine if nums is equal to solid error return count essentially the concept is same what i did the mistake was this mistake using the inbuilt method and count it was unnecessary to actually have two while loops then the next thing it actually has two while loops because it has while loop and from the inside it has a for loop so big of n square time complexity still exists it's not like it eliminated the time complexity or made the code efficient in terms of time complexity it's just that it eliminated certain variables that i had that was absolutely not needed then it updated new array i plus one percentage n is equal to number it directly did that rather than in my case where i was having this issue of doing that that's totally fine i think this is conceptually correct i think i probably made a mistake over here it should be new array new position is equal to nums j loop but whatever that's fine then i'm going to copy this code and then i'm going to control a and control v paste it and let's see that it's running correctly it should probably run correctly we are having an error which error we are having okay it's showing one three five whereas it should be count expected zero output should be three my output is three whereas it should expect it should be returned minus one okay 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 for this we need to make a basically a case where the array is already sorted so in a case where array is already sorted we are going to make a case and write it as for special case when array is already sorted we are going to compare it directly like in this case the array was sorted directly so we don't need to do anything we are going to go like this sorted array is equal to is equal to nums colon if that's the case we'll straight away return zero and why we'll return zero it's because the number of operations that are used in sorting an array that is already sorted is zero now we're going to run it it says three on three cases uh, you can also click on this run button and that's totally fine i'm used to the shortcuts so i use shortcuts almost all the time then the next thing that i'm going to do is submit once you see all of your three test cases that are the base cases that's also called the base test cases then you're going to submit the code let's see fingers crossed maybe it works maybe it doesn't it worked don't be disappointed by this in advance i'm saying this it's going to tell you that your code only beats 6.88 percent of the solutions and it tells you the time complexity What's important for us is the time complexity. Why I told you to not look at solutions is because the solutions are already going to be optimized. This is it. You have solved a lead code question. But the last step after doing all of this is you can actually find out ways to increase, not increase, decrease your time complexity. That is make the code more efficient. Let's look at solution from people that have the lowest running time, this code. Again, you, you just look at question. See, when you look at a solution like this, a part of you is just disappointed because you know you would never be able to think like that what the fuck is t and next and zip i have no fucking idea about this shit let's look at somewhere in between this looks rather similar to what we have done okay it, it, it has done something like you have string slicing you can also do it with list in python i don't prefer it it's using the inbuilt function see right here when it's using the inbuilt functions the code is optimized but not the time complexity so conceptually you're not ahead of me this is how you can solve lead code questions and you can go through lead code after that you can click on problems and you can just go pick your problems pick from the list if you want to pick i usually go with difficulty and then you can see tags whichever questions you want to solve you can go through expand you have all of these topics that you can solve a question from and you can go with lead code keep solving all the questions but this is kind of like how you can solve lead code questions and this i would be so happy if somebody showed a video like this to me like three four years ago when i got started with my engineering back in 2020 because you need lead code and lead code is so important and such an important resource that all the developers know that they need to do lead code but almost 85 percent of them don't take lead code seriously like ever that's why most of the developers are often categorized as average and they never make the kind of money that they should actually make because their conceptual knowledge their horizon hasn't been expanded to the point where it should be there are also other softwares and like other websites i said software should be websites other websites as well where you can practice the interview style questions as well but lead code is the most popular one it's questions library vast majority of the questions are available here you have questions from different companies even though they're useless because they're useful to solve but they're not going to be repeated if you think like the company is going to use the same questions it's never going to happen so this is kind of like a definitive guide on how you can solve your first lead code question i'm going to make a lot of other videos as well in future in case you want to see videos like that do let me know in the comments down below i'm very pumped very excited about this channel now because i haven't been making videos for quite some time honestly generally speaking i'm very excited about this channel there's a lot of stuff that will be coming out very soon so make sure you guys like and subscribe i never tell you guys to do that but make sure you guys do and that's pretty much it i guess i'll catch you guys in the next video Bye-bye. See ya.